Hey there, and welcome to Rob's Custom Wood Shop. My name's Rob, and today I'm going to be building this. Hold on a second. That's better. Where was I? All right, building this beautiful bassinet from solid oak. The first thing I do is I lay all my oak out on the table to help me see the grain direction and match the color up easier. And then using the diagram I printed out, I measure out and I mark all the pieces I need to complete this build. Once that's finished, I can begin the milling process. First, I use the jointer to get one straight edge on all the boards. Then using that straight edge as a reference against my table saw fence, I cut all my pieces to rough width. That's usually a half an inch oversize, but since I'm using oak, I'm gonna cut that measurement down to a quarter of an inch. To make my quarter inch slats, I resaw six pieces to three eighths using the bandsaw. Then I take those pieces over to the jointer where I face joint the bandsaw blade marks off. And since I'm standing at the jointer anyways, I face joint all the rest of the pieces. And then using those flat faces as a reference against my fence, I joint one edge to make it perpendicular to the face, or 90 degrees, whichever you prefer. Moving over to the planer, I finish taking these boards from 4 quarter down to about 13 sixteenths and the slats from 3 eighths to 5 sixteenths. Once I finish milling for the day, I stack the boards up nice and neatly and let them sit for 3 days. After 3 days, I came out to see the prime example of why you mill in two processes. One of these boards warped over the 3 days. Luckily the warp isn't too bad and I can use the jointer to take that out as I mill the boards for the second time down to final dimension. Finally, after five days of milling, I can finally get to building. The first thing I do is I start to glue up some panels. I have one large panel consisting of four boards to glue up. I opt to glue them together in sections of two to help keep them square and flat. So with a liberal amount of glue and moderate clamping pressure, I glue both of these panels together. While those panels cure, I start working on the sides. First I cut the slats to final width. Then using my miter gauge, I cut the upper and lower rails for the sides to length. Once cut to length, I lay out marks for the mortises to be cut. Then I gang the pieces together and hold them with clamps as I transfer those lines to all four pieces. After that, I gang all four pieces on edge to mark out for my dowel holes. Next, using a 3 8 Forestner bit, I drill the holes for all my dowels. Then with the stop set on my crosscut sled, I cut all the slats to length. After waiting for the glue to cure for 24 hours, I'm ready to make two panels into one. I use the exact same procedure as the smaller panels, except for this time, I put one single call in the middle of the panel to help with alignment. Once the glue is cured on that panel, I'm ready to cut it to size. I square up one edge, then I flip the panel over and cut it to width. Then using the crosscut sled, I square up one end, and then I start to cut the pieces that I need, two 4 inch and two 16 inch pieces. Once those pieces are cut to size, I can move back to working on the slats. I attach the board to my drill press base exactly 90 degrees to my fence and 3 quarters of an inch from the center of the bit. To allow for wood movement, I'm drilling these holes 7 16 instead of 3 8 And that takes me to the trickiest part of this whole build. I'm going to attempt to make some 3 8 walnut dowel. I start by cutting some walnut into 7 16 squares. Then using a piece of 3 8 flat iron, I drilled a series of holes in. I'm going to use my fancy mallet to pound my square stock through to try and make it round. The first hole was successful, and after making it through the second hole successfully, I chucked the dowel into the drill and used sandpaper to help knock the corners off. Then it occurred to me maybe I could drill it through the holes. The first one successfully, but the second one not so much on a few tries. But on the let's say 6th try, they started working out for me. And once I finally got enough made, I cut them to length using the crosscut sled. Now a tool you don't see me use very much is my hollow chisel mortiser. But when I need it, it is really nice to have it. After a little bit of time setting this up, I get it so I'm punching holes exactly in the center of my board. 
and then after a quick test fit, 30 more to go. Once all the mortises are done, I take the rails over to the router table and give each side an eighth inch round over. Finally, it's time for a little bit of assembly. First, I put all the slats into the mortises on the lower rail, then I insert the slats into the top rail. To start this glue up, first, I insert one dowel till it just clears the slat. Then using a toothpick, I smear glue around the inside of the hole before flipping the piece over and smearing glue on the outside of the dowel. Then using my fancy mallet, I pound the dowel till it's just proud of the hole. And although this is a very time consuming process, the reward at the end is more than worth it. After the glue is cured, I flush all the dowel pins with the rails using the sander. And now that the sides are completed, I can move on to building the ends. I lay out my design using straight edges and some rounded edges I have laying around the shop. Next, using double sided tape, I press together both end pieces, making sure they stay perfectly aligned. Then I add some weight to seal the deal. The first cut I make is at the table saw. Using my miter gauge set at 5 degrees, I trim both sides. Then I take the piece over to the bandsaw, where I do my very best to cut along all the curves, trying to make sure to stay on the outside of my line the best I can. Thankfully I have a 10 inch disc sander, which I use to get rid of all the saw blade marks and bring all my curves up to the line. Next I focus my attention to the feet and the uprights, which I'm joining together using half laps. And somewhere in the middle of cutting these, I regretted not putting my dado stack in. Once I finish cutting the half laps, I cut the profile for the feet at the bandsaw. Once the profiles were cut, I joined the uprights to the feet using glue and a few brad nails just to hold them while the glue cured. Before removing the double stick tape on the ends, I drilled a hole to receive the hanging bolts. Next, with my table saw blade tipped to 5 degrees and set to 3 8 inch high, I make two passes on each side to make a quarter inch dado to receive the bottom. Then I use my dowling jig to drill the holes for my thread inserts on the ends of each of the sides. Now it wasn't until I was editing till I noticed I lost the footage of this and to me it's a pretty important part. How I made the sides fit is I measured a quarter inch in from the edge and a quarter inch in from the bottom and I already had the lines marked for drilling my holes and I simply just transferred the lines over and then using a square I found the center and drilled my holes. Once the ends were attached to the sides I knew the exact measurement I needed to make my bottom and I cut that out of a quarter inch piece of birch. Now since the bottom is perfectly square, when I bolt the ends to the sides and tighten them down, the bottom helps hold everything nice and square. Once everything's nice and tight, I do a flex test, because this is one project I do not want the bottom falling out of. Then to hold the uprights together, I drill more holes for thread inserts into these spreader bars. And then using a ratchet, I install the inserts, and then transfer the hole locations to the uprights and drill them. Then I take the uprights, the spreader bars, and the cradle end pieces over to the router table where I give them a quarter inch round over on all the edges. Next comes the part that everybody loves. I start by hand sanding the slats up to 220 grit. Then I use the random orbital sander and sand all the flat pieces up to 220 grit as well. And then to join these two pieces together, I got four of these 5 16 eye bolts. I use a little bit of heat, open them up, and then join them together. And I did that to make two. To finish this project, I applied four coats of polyurethane, sanding lightly between each coat. This was a great build. Even though it had a few challenges in it that I had to overcome, I quite enjoyed the whole thing from start to finish. Do you have any tips, tricks, or questions on this project? Please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, don't forget to hammer that thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and ring that little notification bell so you never miss when I upload new content. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on the next project.